Hi, and welcome back to All Things Equilateral. I thought I'd spend a little time with you today going over through some of Sophie Kinsella's books because our number one challenge for Chickalitathon is to read a Sophie Kinsella book. So let's start with the one that started it all, Confessions of a Shopaholic. Now, a lot of you have either read the book or seen the movie, and it's about Becky Bloomwood who uh, has a fabulous flat, a fabulous life. She is, you know, a, a shopper to end all shoppers, loves a good sale, loves designer stuff. The trouble is she can't afford all of it. And so what ensues is a plot where Becky and her roommate, who's trying to help her, get into all sorts of shenanigans. Becky ends up being a columnist for a financial magazine and meeting a man who runs it um, or is like an editor and shenanigans ensue. The bank keeps calling her. She has a personal relationship with the guy who's trying to collect on her credit card account um, in the sense that, you know, she's always dodging him. It is so funny and it is exactly that romantic comedy feel that I love at a chick -lit. The next book is Shopaholic Ties the Knot, followed quickly by Shopaholic and Baby, where uh, she ends up getting married and having a baby. It's so funny. Shopaholic and Sister, I have not read this one. She's back, she's married, and her long, long sister, long lost, sister is what I meant to say. She meets up with her somehow. This is part of her honeymoon, Becky's honeymoon or shopaholic. It's around the world honeymoon. So she ends up finding uh, her sister and uh, returning to London in this book. In Shopaholic to the Stars, our favorite shopaholic, Becky Bloomwood, uh, returns and she's arrived in Hollywood with her daughter, two-year-old Minnie. They've relocated to Los Angeles. Oh, a book set in Los Angeles, you guys. You could kill two birds with one stone because that's one of our other challenges is a book set in LA or Hollywood. Um, she becomes a personal stylist. And then the book that I didn't even know existed, Shopaholic to the Rescue. This is about um, Becky again, and she is now this time in Las Vegas because her father has vanished from Los Angeles on a mysterious quest with the husband of Becky's best friend, Suze. Becky's mom is hysterical. Anyway, Las Vegas takes place in my own state, except South. <laughs> There you go. I think this is going to be the one that I'm going to read for Chickalitathon. I think. I'm not really sure though. The next book is one that just came out called I Owe You One and it's about a girl whose father passes away and she is responsible for the store, a charming houseware store that he's left to the girl, Fixie Farr to Fixie and her siblings. So interesting, right? Um, Fixie meets someone in a coffee shop who asks her to watch his laptop for just a second and that's how the romantic plot starts. Okay, this next book I totally loved. It's My Not So Perfect Life and it's about this, I believe she's an assistant to her boss, Demeter Farlow, and Demeter is brilliant and creative, lives with her perfect family in a posh townhouse and wears the coolest clothes. Katie's life, meanwhile, and Katie's our protagonist, who's the assistant, is a daily struggle from her dismissal rent, from her dismal rental to her oddball flatmates um, to tense office politics. This is just a wonderful office romance. If you guys like The Hating Game, I would say check this out. It's similar in setting, not necessarily in characters, but I loved the way this wrapped up. I also loved what it had to say about, you know, the Instagram perfect life, that kind of thing, or our social media obsession these days. Remember me. This is an amnesia plot, and it's about a girl, 28-year-old Lexi Smart, who wakes up in a London hospital, and everything is perfect. Her teeth are perfect, her body is toned, her handbag is Vuitton. Um, she has survived a car accident in a Mercedes, no less, and she's, but she's lost a big chunk of her memory. She has no idea how she went from a working girl to a corporate big shot with a new loft, a personal assistant, a carb-free diet, and glamorous new friends. So I'm all in on an Amisha plot. It's one of my favorites. Maybe for next year's 
Chiclitathon. Are there enough amnesia plots to make that a challenge? Let me know down below. Okay, my girls love this as much as I did. It's about finding Audrey. This is a YA book. So you're if you're into YA, this is just an amazing story and a bit of a departure. It's a little bit darker than other Sophie Kinsella books. It is young adult. It's about a girl named Audrey who had an unpleasant incident and as a result she has severe social anxiety. Um, she wears dark glasses whenever she needs to protect herself and she meets this fun guy named Linus uh, through her brother and the fact her brother plays games, video games, and how this Linus person kind of helps her come to an understanding. Love this book. Kat read it, loved it. Bella read it, loved it. So we highly recommend this. This one's called Can You Keep a Secret? It's one that I have not read. It stars Emma Corrigan, a young woman with a huge heart, an irrepressible spirit, and a few little secrets. There are secrets she's keeping from her mother. Um, like Sammy the goldfish in my parents' kitchen is not the same goldfish that mom gave to me. Um, to look after while she and dad went to Egypt. Secrets from her boyfriend. I weigh 128 pounds and not 118 like Connor thinks. And from her colleagues, um, it was me who jammed the copier that time. In fact, all of the times. So cute. This book, I think, is the most highly rated book of Sophie's. It's I've Got Your Number. Hands down, probably my favorite. Uh, it's about a our main character's name is Poppy Wyatt, and she's about to marry her ideal man. One afternoon, everything kind of falls apart. She ends up picking up a stranger's cell phone by accident. And they end up having this back and forth conversation over the cell phone. Uh, it is kind of a love triangle, kind of not. The predicament that Poppy finds herself in when she desperately picks up this uh, stranger's cell phone is hysterical. It also challenges our ideals, you know, when we think that we have that perfect relationship but refuse to see it for what it is, um, the fact that it may not be perfect. So this book is so good. If you need a Sophie Kinsella recommendation, start here. It is a standalone. Actually, I think all her books are standalones except the Shopaholic one. This one came out last year and it's called Surprise Me. And it's about Sylvia and Dan who have a comfortable home 10 years later and uh, beautiful twin girls. Everything is wonderful. They decide to bring surprises into their marriage to keep things fresh and fun in pursuit of, their, of the project Surprise Me from unexpected gifts to restaurant dates to sexy photo shoots, mishaps arise and disastrous and comical results. I don't know, I'm sometimes hesitant about reading books about marriage. My husband and I have been married for 25 years and let me tell you, there have been some long years in there, <laughs> but um, I don't know, it's Sophie, so it's gotta be funny, right? It's not gonna like bring me down. And Domestic Goddess. Workaholic attorney Samantha Sweeting has just done the unthinkable. She's made a mistake so huge it'll wreck any chance of a partnership. Going into utter meltdown, she walks out of her London office, gets on a train, ends up in the middle of nowhere. Asking for directions at a big, beautiful house, she's mistaken for an interviewee and finds herself being offered a job as a housekeeper. And this is a person who can't bake a potato, can't sew a button, and can't get the blanking ironing board to open. Kind of start all over again, or what if I had this career? I think about that all the time, you guys, because uh, my last job before my substitute librarian gig was a software project manager and uh, you know sometimes I wonder how I found myself there and was there another career that I could have pursued maybe it's school librarian so that's another book that I have not read this one I have read it's 20s girl look at the cover here it's a flapper and the cover in the back is a much more Modern Gal, one of my favorite books, honestly. I keep saying that. Laura Lington has always had an overactive imagination, but suddenly the imagination seems to be in overdrive. Normal 20-something young women don't get visited by ghosts. So it's about this girl, Laura, sitting at her great aunt Sadie's uh, funeral, I believe, and this ghost aunt Sadie appears and tells her to find this missing necklace. 
that's been in Sadie's possession for more than 75 years. Sadie cannot rest without it. Um, Lara, on the other hand, has a number of ongoing distractions. And so the two of them, the ghost and Lara, pursue the mystery of where this beautiful necklace is. It's so, so sweet. And this is a mystery as well. So not quite a thriller plot though, but certainly, you know, something that is worth pursuing. Certainly something that I just really enjoyed. And again, it's a standalone, such a good story. You know, ghost stories, they're good. I should have saved that for Spookathon because that's my kind of ghost story. Anyway, those are just some of the Sophie Kinsella books. I believe those are all of them. If I missed some, I'm sorry. Yeah. She writes prolifically. <laughs> but let me know down below which are your favorite books or which ones you're planning to read for Chick Litathon. And hey, give me a thumbs up, won't you? Please hit subscribe and hit the bell icon because you never know when I'm gonna post. And Chick Litathon is coming. I'm so excited, you guys. Thanks so much for watching. Cut. Okay.